Paul Verant is spending a lot of time behind the griddle of his latest restaurant, Gaijin, which sits beneath the Morgan Avenue stop on the CTA Green Line. His singular focus? Okonomiyaki, a savory cabbage pancake with origins in Osaka, Japan. The reason he opened the restaurant? His wife. She studied Japanese in college at Duke, lived there for a semester, fell in love with Okonomiyaki, introduced me to Okonomiyaki when we first started dating in Chicago in, in 96. There are two distinct styles. You know, the, the original style hails from Osaka, where all the ingredients are all mixed together. Um, cabbage, scallions, some kind of a liquid, typically it's dashi, um, pickled ginger, temp tempura flakes, egg, flour, and then that's all cooked on a tepon or, or a griddle. In some cases, the proteins are mixed up as well. In this case, pulled chicken leg and thigh meat. The pancakes are bound with dashi, a soup stock that forms the basis of most Japanese cuisine, typically made from a type of seaweed and preserved tuna. Shaped and flipped, the pancake gets four unique toppings just before being served. A brush of okonomiyaki sauce. It's basically their sort of homemade version of Worcestershire sauce, but it's kind of a sweet and sour barbecue sauce, right? Then a drizzle of kewpie mayo, a handful of aonori, another type of dried seaweed, and finally a handful of bonito, the smoked and dried skipjack tuna found all over Japan. Take note of how these thin wisps of tuna shimmy as they're still jumping in the ocean. The other style is from Hiroshima, which is a more layered affair. Thin batter is topped with bonito and mung beans, a handful of scallions and cabbage. Then, if you choose, maybe some slightly rendered bacon across the top. Flip it over, then get out the yakisoba noodles, boil them for a minute, and after you drain them, cook them on the griddle with yakisoba sauce. Now cover that mound of noodles with the pancake, then do the same thing to a partially cooked egg. Finally, flip the whole mess over and repeat the same four toppings like the Osaka version. At the table, you'll need a tiny spatula to cut up these massive pancakes, but the mess and the riot of flavors delivers a unique punch of umami or savoriness, plus a riot of textures from everything going on inside. It's not going on, but it, but, it, but it works. Up until now, most of the Japanese food experience in Chicago has been limited to sushi or ramen or yakitori skewers, but now, thankfully, a taste of Osaka with one of the world's great savory pancakes. In the West Loop, Steve Delinsky, ABC7 Eyewitness News. Hey, if you like that video, be sure to subscribe to our ABC7 Chicago YouTube channel.